for or call you the president of the Cagayan de Oro Press Club. This is law is timely. It will help clear the issues that have been passionately discussed in all media videos. That our city and the Cagayan de Oro Press Club are chosen to host this discussion is most welcome. Now, the peace process is moving on, and this roundtable discussion is part of it. Peace isn't easy to achieve, it is full. Yes, it is full, but not through ballots anymore, as it is an obsolete way of resolving conflicts. But through reasonable dialogues and debates, Mahira Pagera, walang mananalo. Lahat ay talo. My friends, there is the substitute the peaceful resolutions of conflicts. Para sa Diyos, sa bayan, sa sambayanan, isusulong natin ang usapang pangkatayapa. Let's move on. Thank you very much. So, uh, to give us another remark from the uh, organizer of this forum, is the cluster head for Mindanao, of Philippine Information Agency, and he is our regional director for Region 11. Let's give a round of applause to Director Efren Albanuel. Thank you. I want to give you a lot of time to discuss it. It's a a Let's be honest and frank and uh, you ask questions. What do you think? What do you think? What we can do to preserve and to promote the culture of peace in Mindanao? In fact, last week we had a communication planning workshop. We to come up with communication plan in order to help promote not only about the Bansamoro basic laws, but in general, we have to promote the culture of peace in Mindanao. In fact, I have come up with three core messages. For those in general, one message is Kapayapaan at kaularan ng Mindanao, lagi natin tinatanaw. We should always look at and dream. We have to cherish the dream of attaining peace in Mindanao. Katong nagapuyo sa Pangsamoro, ang among message siya is, bayan po, bayan mo, sa Pangsamoro magkasama tayo. And then for those Outside of Pangsamuro, our message is, ang Pangsamuro ay Mindanao pa rin. Kaya kapayapaan at pagkakaisa dapat makaplan natin. So, we should not look at Pangsamuro as a separate territory. Separate, but that is still part of Mindanao. So, it's a habit. Kanang Pangsamuro, dili ba na sa pagkuno ng term? Meaning, sa Pangsamoro is Moro Umlan. So, ato yung hapon yung hindi. So, uh, mauni ang akong pangandoy na uh, pinangalag, tanang-tanang kita magpapil. Aroon na uh, makapot na ito ang um, ng peace and development sa Mindanao. O so, kini, takunin uh, ngayon kayong makuha po na mo kung sa mga yun ang na kami ngayon po yung tabang sa inyo ha o kaya po sa buhay sa private media na ako mong hinaon na ato po may explain sa mga katawan kung saan yung pangsamoro, kung saan yung pangsamoro basic law Oh, na ang nanatay abogado din ni si Adorni Pasman. Silingan ninyo ni kaya pero marami man. Pero takong, takong mahila na din siya. 
Pero, tanan-tanan, basta kita tagamin na daw, saan na doon ang atong sa peace and development. So, uh, tanang salamat, so may mabutan. To be here with us today is the Editor-in-Chief of Windows News, rather than Ms. Caroline Arguelles. Let's give him a round of applause. Para overview na natin. We only have 495 days left from today to the end of the Aquino administration. Uh, June 13, 2016 is supposed to be the end of the Aquino administration and supposedly is the inauguration of the Bangsamoro government according to the roadmap set out and agreed upon by both parties in 2012. Uh, of course, the way the world operates, GPH has a six-year term. No? Ang mga libelde, wala lang ito uh, pinag-usap ang terms. Ano? So, ilang, itong usapin ba sa more of this process, nakaanim na ko tayo na presidential administrations. Ayan, mula from Marcos, all the way to Aquino the Mother, hanggang sa naging Aquino the Sun. Nine na ko na presidential advisors on the peace process. Uh, from one Moro National Liberation Front, uh, again, uh, from MNLF to MILF, uh, ngayon, may PIFF na naman, uh, marami ng split split, marami factions. Next, please. Uh, 40 years of peace negotiations na po, from 74 to 2014. Uh, kasi patuloy yung peace process, 40, 41st year na po tayo, nag-uusap ng Kapayapa. I leave it to the panel uh, now to discuss uh, the Bangsamoro Basic Law and I hope you will ask them questions easy and difficult para po makapusapan natin ang maingay itong Bangsamoro Basic Law. Maraming salamat and again, thank you for coming. And to give us the, fir uh, to give us the first uh, statement is the Chief Legal Counsel of the GPS. Peace Panel, uh, Attorney Anna Basman, representing Professor Miriam Coronel Ferrer, the chair of the GPS Peace Panel. Living within the Bangsamoro, but the entire country. If there is one thing that came out right from all these, it is that we are given the chance to introduce to the public consciousness the roots of the conflict. The horrors suffered not only in the hands of foreign colonizers, but also those in power thereafter. Definitely, voices to this effect have always been weak, but they are getting stronger by the day. We offer the BBL as an essential tool towards giving the Bangsamoro something that is guaranteed in international law and reiterated in our constitution, the right of self-determination within the bounds of our supreme law. By all means, review the BBL make it stronger and less susceptible to judicial nullification. Let our lawmakers come up with a BBL that will stand constitutional scrutiny and address the legitimate grievances of the Bangsamoro. We remain confident that our legislators will not shirk from this duty. The events of late have also provided us the opportunity to review and check our perspective. We have got to stop thinking of the BBL as a reward to the MILF a prize they earned after negotiating with the government for 17 long years. We need to realize that the BBL is a government action, a legislation that is due all Moros, all Lumads, all Christian settlers, all Filipinos in conflict-affected areas who are tired of the status quo, who are tired of living their lives awaiting the next armed skirmish, whatever the trigger may be. That will leave them IDPs, out-of-school youth, orphans, widows, or worse, dead, or perhaps better off because uh, it ends their suffering. Senator Bongbong Marcos has a more imaginative description for it when he said the PBL is now comatose. Yet, there are hopes that the PBL will still be passed by Congress. The $64 question is, which BBL? The BBL, according to Congressman Rufus Rodriguez and Senator Alan Peter Cayetano, or the BBL that is 
In the words of MIF Chair, Brother Al Hajj Murad Ibrahim, the mutually, mutually agreed one. From the time the PBL left the portals of the PTC, we have always held on to the principal position that the PBL should and must be in accordance with the FAP and CAP. Government ought to have held on to the same. This is not just wishful thinking on our part. This is not mere imagination. This is a commitment of government in the peace negotiations. Otherwise, it would not have signed the FAP and CAP from which the BBL draws its rationale and legitimacy. We have not abandoned this position and we will not abandon it. It is for this reason that we stand behind Brother Chairman of Ashmore that we will not accept any watered-down version of the BBL let alone a mangled one that is far removed from the spirit and letter of the heart. Even GPH Peace Panel Chair Miriam Cornel Ferrer, perhaps in a moment of epiphany, has realized the logic and validity of our position when she said, and I quote, no BBL is better than the mango BBL, unquote. It is very unfortunate that the BBL, not to mention the MILF, suffered the worst collateral damage inflicted by the fallout of the Mama Sapano incident. In fact, given the emerging facts Surrounding the Mama Sapano incident, we are inclined to believe that the BBL is or was a target, apart from the so-called terrorists Marwan and Usman of the people behind the jackal in Mama Sapano. At this point in time, when the MILF's sincerity is being questioned, and we are being crucified in public. And when ludicrous conditions have been imposed on us in connection with the Mama Sabano incident, we are now deprived of the luxury of focus and the freedom to argue our case vis-a-vis -vis the PBL before the bar of public opinion. For no matter what we say, no matter what appeasement some of us resort to, we will not be listened to because in the eyes of high officials, the likes of Cayetano et al. and sectors of the mainstream media, we are villains that do not deserve such a thing as the BBL. And even as we speak now, even as we speak now, the politicians claim that the MILF entered into a political agreement with the executive branch alone, not the legislative and, judi and judiciary branches of government. What sorcery is this? Given a hypothetical situation wherein we have to negotiate again with government, Malakanya, Congress, Supreme Court? No wonder why perhaps renegade groups such as the BIFF do not want to participate in peace talks. They are as confused as we are now as to which, as to which in the holy trinity of government is government. So tell us, what do we do? Tell us, what do we do? In grappling with this colossal injustice, nay, national madness, we are now facing 
we can only take refuge in the fact that we are a revolutionary organization of the moral liberation movement and shall remain a revolutionary organization until those who call themselves are partners in peace. They go partners that would include Congress and the judiciary. Partners in peace finally learn minus the political gimmickry and show this fanfare the real meaning of peace and the real meaning of justice. In other words, until they are able to really understand in the words of the surviving framers of the 1987 Philippine Constitution that, and I quote, Pang Samaro is about development of people, not the constitutionality of words, unquote. Thank you very much. The central government and the Pang Samaro government accept the concept of evolution as inspired by the principles of subjectivity. Decisions are to be made at the appropriate level to ensure public accountability and transparency and in consideration of good governance and the general welfare of the people. The central government is a respect the exercise of public competencies and exclusive powers of the Banks of World Government. On the other hand, the Banks of World Government shall also respect the exercise of the competencies and the third powers of the central government. To make clear the relationship, government powers are being delineated as we have the reserve powers of the central government. We have the concurrent powers, which are powers that are being shared or to, to be exercised together between the central government and the Bangsamoro government, and the exclusive powers of the Bangsamoro government. The question is, what will happen if there are issues arising from the exercise of these uh, of this, uh, powers? The agreement, as well as the proposed Bangsamoro basic law, provides that Issues arising from the exercise of these powers shall be resolved through what is being called as intergovernmental relations mechanism, IPR. Now, consistent with the principle of autonomy and the asymmetric relationship of the central government and the Bangsamoro government, the president shall exercise general supervision over the Bangsamoro government to ensure that laws are faithfully executed. The Bangsamoro government is a ministerial, the proposed Bangsamoro government is ministerial in form, just like a parliamentary system of government. The powers are vested in the Bangsamoro parliament, and the Bangsamoro parliament shall have the authority to enact laws on matters that are within the powers and competence of government in the income derived from the exploration, development, and utilization of natural resources. So once this income uh, will increase, then it will, uh, uh, the black run will decrease ultimately. And of course we have a special development fund. Now we should look at the proposed uh, Bank Samoro through the lens of, uh, the, of the decentralization. The, uh, the uh, Bank Samoro is a, a good uh, model of decentralizing powers from the central government to the, the regional government. Now, we see that the CAP, the, the, the framework agreement of the Bank Samoro and the uh, comprehensive agreement of the Bank Samoro are political documents. These are agreements between the Philippine government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. Since these are political documents, we need a legal, we need a legislation in order to implement this. And that's why we have the proposed but some more basic law. The, from, uh, the, the proposed Bangsamoro basic law is, is actually 
the implementing mechanism of the comprehensive agreement on the uh, on the uh, pension. So, a successful implementation of the comprehensive agreement on the Bank Samoro requires the passage of the law, and it requires the passage of the uh, Bank Samoro basic law. Now, successful implementation of the CEP will open opportunities for peace to the whole of Mindanao, to, to Mindanao as well as to the whole country. It provides opportunity for people in conflict of affected communities to pursue their economic endeavors, and there will be better chances for development works and attract investment. And the most important is it will provide opportunities for uh, for healing wounds of, uh, among people in conflict affected areas. We have to know that the conflict has been very costly. Some conservative estimates states that the conflict has, brought, has caused the death of around no less than 50,000 people since its And according to government the big figures, the government spent 76 billion from 1970 to 1996 for the war. In year 2000, when our war against the Maile, the government spent no less than 6 uh, billion pesos only for three, for three months. And the World Bank estimate says that the economic output loss because of the war is around, around 2 billion to 3 billion US dollars from 1970 to 2001. That's about 5 billion pesos to 7.5 billion pesos. The war has been very costly, and then we have here an opportunity to end that war. This opportunity is the CAB. The CAB is a compromise solution to the lingering conflict in Mindanao. The CAB uh, recognizes the Bank Samoro identity, but they are Bank Samoro, but they are also Filipinos. They are still Filipino citizens. There is an acknowledgement of the Bank Samoro territory, but that territory is still part of the Philippine territory. The Bank Samoro will have, uh, can exercise self governance, but that Bank Samoro government is still part of the Philippine government. So uh, here, uh, I think uh, the comprehensive agreement on the Bank Samoro is an, uh, it's a, a good compromise uh, solution, and it needs to be implemented, and that implementation needs the passage of the Bank Samoro Basic Law, a, basic, a version which shall be faithfully, that shall uh, faithfully in the, uh, include, incorporate the provisions of the CEP. With that, that guy, salamat by contact discussion or the open forum, which will be moderated by our regional director of Region 11, Director Efren Elvan Gwen. This might not be acceptable for the MLF as well as the other PPL supporters. And uh, this question goes to both the GPH and the MLF panel of speakers. Um, so what are our alternatives if if in that uh, case there will be a water down PPL? So have we already seen uh, um, alternatives uh, to this, or um, do we go for another round of uh, BPL discussions or push for an amendment? We sign a peace pact with the government. Mm -hmm. We have the cessation of hostilities agreement. We will not break the pact that we sign with government. Contrary to what other people say or think, we are not going back to the path of war. But then, negotiations will continue. Because technically, the negotiations have not ended. They only end when we sign the exit agreement. Now that we have not yet signed the exit agreement, 
the negotiations continue. Until such time, as I said, that our partners in peace realize the importance of having a DPL that would reflect the fact and the crap. And if that takes more years to come, then so did. Thank you, but I do not entertain that idea. I still very hopeful that Congress uh, will pass a law that could implement the, uh, uh, the, the agreement. Uh, the bottom line here is uh, the, the agreement. Uh, and to me, uh, it will be the responsibility of government. Uh, the passage of the BBL is a responsibility of government uh, as, uh, as its commitment. Because the, the, uh, if government we cannot pass the law, then the, uh, the CAP cannot be implemented. So it now becomes the responsibility of government to pass a law. But that law that will be passed should not, should not dilute the agreement. It should be a reflective of the agreement. My question is, why didn't MILF insist that the negotiation be done simultaneously with the executive and the legislative? Second question, when you state in your roadmap that legislation is one of the important steps towards final uh, agreement or implementation. Are you saying that the legislative process would be a mere rubber stamping process? That the legislators would have no right to interpose their own ideas? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with a simple answer. Seventeen years ago, when we negotiated with government, we negotiated with government. We negotiated with government. Whatever the problems are inside government, are internal to government. We were negotiating with the government, specifically with the Office of the President, because of that treaty-making powers of government. We were not concerned as to whether the executive did not coordinate with the executive or the judiciary. To us, we were negotiating with government. With your problematic, um, problematic uh, the, the questions were quite problematic because uh, Kapag uh, siguro, kapag uh, mag-usap ang United States at saka Pilipinas, sino ba ang nag-usap? Is it the Chief Justice? Is it the Senate President? Is it the Speaker of the House? Or the, or, or the President of the Republic of the Philippines talking with the United States? In the same way, Hindi ko ma-imagine ang situation there are three branches of government and then you have to talk with all these three branches. I mean, uh, med medyo mahirap. And uh, if we pursue this argument, it might discourage other armed groups to talk to government because the question, kanina ba kami makipag-usap? So that's why, and tungkol naman dun sa second question. Our idea is, it's not making Congress as a rubber stamp. But ang nakikita kasi namin is, ang Congress should also should situate that the content of the BPL shall be in conformity kung ano ang pinermahan ng gobyerno. Hindi lalampas ito, di ba? Hindi lalampas ito kasi ang ipirmahan ng gobyerno is commitment ng gobyerno. So, this is the situation na huwag lang lalampas ito. Kung lalampas ito, sabi nila eh, lumampas kayo dito. 
Siguro hindi na ito maganda, ito mga pastel sa pagkabahan niya. So, and, and that does not do to mix compress as a rubber stamp. My question is, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Was it clear to the government's panel that, uh, that uh, I mean, this limitation that you have just explained you know, was uh, part of the deal? You know, so that I think it's important to clarify this. Certainly, that was uh, one of the discussions during the negotiations. The uh, the stand of the MILF that they're negotiating with the government of the Philippines and the limitations of the Philippine government, the executive, about the separation of powers. That was discussed. It was it was uh, it was among the discussions during the negotiations. But the government, through the president, has made that commitment. Made that commitment to translate the agreements into domestic legislation for some parts and into. Uh, other government actions for other parts, like the normalization aspect. And uh, that is what we're doing now. We're, we're using as much of the president's political capital as there is or what remains of it to push for this uh, BBL. And that's why my answer earlier was there is, there is no plan B for the government also. But we want a BBL that is consistent with the CAB, and that's what we're moving towards. Um. First, in the I heard you go on this. I heard you go on this on both sides. Um, based on what you were saying, it, it uh, seems to me that, or I have this impression that during the negotiations, uh, the people from the government panel uh, gave you a lot of hope. It's a B BBL will pass Congress and it would pass the constitutional test. It is, is that correct, sir? Uh, earlier in the negotiations, we were all saying that you, you have to amend the constitution. That was our position. But we were made to understand that the constitutions have enough flexibilities to accommodate all this. So, we said, yeah, no, uh, 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 if that is the case, then we should give it a try. Right. So, I think that's that. So, we were made to understand that the constitutions have enough flexibility to accommodate it. If, for example, the Supreme Court will declare uh, the uh, BPN as uh, unconstitutional, then we have to resort to the other option. Amend the Constitution. It would be the responsibility of government to amend the Constitution to accommodate that. Uh, earlier, we have already said, oh, OK, we can give it a try. We will we'll see. But if uh, ultimately the Supreme Court said, no, it cannot be that, then the option is to amend the Constitution. I think that what Congress passes will not be acceptable. Okay. It's not that left that can be speech. Or it can be not acceptable. So does it mean you will go back to the, the peace negotiating? No, uh, okay. uh, you have the agreement. And both parties have obligation under the agreement to implement, to do its own part. So, I, I, I think uh, uh, we still want to see the government has to pass a law that would conform with the agreement. Hindi namin na iniisip yun eh. Hindi namin responsibility na yun. Responsibility na sa nobyerno. So kung hindi nila matupad yun, it means to say, hindi sila nag-comply sa akin. And just reiterate yung sinabi na kanina ni Sir Bobby. The, the, what, one good thing about this uh, peace table is that even after the signing of the comprehensive agreement, the panels weren't dissolved. 
That's because it's part of the roadmap that they will only be dissolved, it will be functus official once all, all of the substantive aspects of the agreement have been implemented and they sign an exit agreement. So in any eventuality, there has been many bumps in the road in the implementation of this uh, uh, comprehensive agreement. He put in first. But you see that the, co the process continues to move forward because of the presence, the continued presence and active involvement of those who signed the comprehensive agreement in the implementation itself. And so, uh, to po yun, pag na problema, the parents are still there to talk. It's not go back to war. That's not an option for both of you. Where did the quarter function take again the world? We had an interview with the uh, Congressman Rodriguez just recently. He's, he's uh, positive that the BBL law will be passed. But he mentioned three points. I'm not sure if these are conditions, but there are three points. He said the MILF should return the rest of the firearms. Aside from the 16 that were already returned, there are others that still with the, in the possession of the MILF. Secondly, he said the MILF should surrender Pasitos money, who they believe is living within the territory of MILF. The third point is cases should be filed against the commanders or those from MILF or that's, that's what his words are, who were involved in the Mama Sapano clash. Ah, uh, a problem dito problema dito is pinagbibintangan ka ng kasalanan na hindi naman ikaw gumawa. I think we should put the Bamasapan uh, incident in its proper context. Hmm? Proper context. Sino ba ang nag -atake? Is it the Mayalet? I am a uh, whole state the operation with the, uh, the SAP. Under the mechanism the this process, it says that there should be coordination. They did not make that coordination. They did not even uh, inform the uh, Philippine Army in the 6th ID uh, about that operation. I am not uh, yung operasyon and then isisigil mong i-mailet. Oh, what is the sense of justice? One is, the i-mailet has already returned to the government kung ano ang nakuha na. Eh, kung ano nakuha ng BIAP, ipasauli mo sa i-mailet? Nagigira na nga, nagbabarila na nga ang i-mailet at saka BIAP? Oh, yung, uh, yung rationality, yung ra uh, rationality ng mga ganyan. Is it fair? O yung nakuha ng civilian, may sa huling ba? Uh, yung si Bas Basit Osman, you only hold the Malib responsible. But in complex situation, nobody is in full control of a certain area. This is a reality. Why can't you not also hold responsible the mayor where Basitus Man is staying? You are responsible the mayor. Why can you not hold the chief of police or the municipality or the provincial director of the PNP held accountable, responsible also? Because if Basitus Man is located in, in, in the area of operation, Sila na yun. Diba? Oo. Oh. Bakit imahinip na? Bakit imahinip na? Ang hindi nila nakita is by using the mechanism of the peace process, mar maraming problema na nasusupa. Yan ang dapat nilang tinitingnan. Uh, How many cases were being solved because of the cooperation of the Himalayan and the Philippine government through the Aja, through the CCS. What is the purpose of the uh, mechanism in the peace process? In order to prevent an incident like that. Hmm? 
So, kung hindi mo gamitin yung mechanism ng, uh, ng peace process, then you, you run the rest of, you know, incident. Yung bagtag lang po, to sa sinabi ni Professor Abud, kung if you, if you were monitoring yung uh, Senate hearing dito sa Mount Sabano, during the first Senate hearing, inamin, inamin ni ni uh, Nina Peñas nung siya, when he was being uh, interrogated by, uh, by Senator Pinko Nasan, that doon sa Oplan Exodus, yung MILF was categorized as enemy force. Enemy force. See? Is that what a partner does to another partner? Enemy force. So, sino ang tapos kami ang sasabihin na insincere? Insincere. Kaya sinabi ni, ni Professor Rapun, there were instances in the past na if the military or the police were about to launch operations against criminal elements or terrorist groups, merong coordination, umaatras ang MILF, tinutulog ang pangay in many instances. Kasi nga, partners tayo for peace. So ito ang sinasabi namin. Ilagay natin, ang sarang lang naman is katarungan. Pero hindi. Kung putok ang mama sa pano, 26 pa lang, kung saan-saan quarters, dumaharating yung bomba sa ano, sa media, pardon my saying so, sa mga politiko, kung saan-saan. Si hindi man lang kami bigyan ng panahon para mag-explain at tapusin yung investigation. Kayo ang mag-usga kasi alam namin na kayo ay, alam namin na kayo ang mga kaibigan namin sa media, eh medyo nakakapag-isip-isip. We have an ARMM which is already in place. What is wrong with ARMM? Is it something that is, are there something in the law that created ARMM that is not acceptable to the MILF? Could they not have, even if the government panel, could they not have amended the ARMM law to conform to whatever? whatever would fit the MIF, that would have been simpler and easier than to come up with a new law and pass it on to people rather than amending an existing law. Can you extend a new statement ng isang senator when, uh, when he pointed out that uh, because we saw you perform good, we gave you this budget, we're rewarding you with this budget. It shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be uh, a reward system for an autonomous region, an autonomous government that should be a step higher or, or more than your regular local government units. And that's only one aspect of it, the, the fiscal aspect of it. Number two, many other things about the dilution of powers, uh, many other things about the structure of government, the uh, representation in the government of the region, those things, those things are being uh, incorporated in this BDL to improve this, the governance in this uh, in this region in accordance with the promise of the Constitution, with the promise of the Constitution to grant uh, a special sector in our society left behind not just because of the foreign powers, the, the injustices committed by them, but the government itself, the government that followed after that. So those are the things that are being incorporated in this BDL. I would over there. But I think uh, that question should is better posed to government because it is government that said that arm is a failed experiment. That question should be posed to government because it is government that said that arm is a failed experiment. And in so far as we are concerned, we no longer want to be guinea pigs in a failed experiment. I'm Ben Contreras, columnist of Goldstack. I have two questions which uh, impossible just give an answer of yes or no. Uh, to whom do you refer? To the Bangsamoro people. To our Bangsamoro people, brothers, Muslim brothers, uh, this is my question. Do you consider yourself citizens of the Republic of the Philippines? The no terrorism has been reported to be 
living in your area. In fact, uh, one married the widow of the uh, leader of Abu Sayyaf. My question is, are you aware that they, they, they have been there for, for quite a while? Under the, uh, under the mechanism of the peace process through the Hajjah, so uh, I, I think if government would uh, find that say, oh, Mr. So-and-so is somewhere there, so uh, they would report, uh, they would uh, take up this in the Hajjah, discuss on how, what, what to do about it. So the there is a mechanism. Uh, there is a mechanism to do that. So the simple answer is no. Yeah, because okay. these people are moving around. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Okay. For my disability dogs, if I'm this area of your work, can you bang ang patuki sa mga issue din ng Japan sa mga bisiklo? Malaysia, ako nung dito man, wala pa sa Pilipinas. Wala yung mauta na. Then, uh, kano ba? Mula na kung uh, ipinalalang ka mga grupo sa mga muslim dito na dita sa Maginanao, ang uh, nag-usa, uh, uh, wala pa ilaing grupo. Kato mga inilang mga pamilya dito sa Maginanao, ikaya e, katulad ako ang uh, panutana, o pagkutanda sa akong programa, nga may ako man, babalaga sila, nga ang budget sa bansa mo ng 70 million, o nga ang budget sa Armed Forces of the Philippines, wala ako ng 70 million, babalaga sila, nga ka ng 70 million, ipalito, helikopter, tanki ni Kira, kung ba't na rin kita po sa mga 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 Nak sukut sa 1997, 1997, Januari 1997. In that negotiation, an negotiation was here in the ground. Internal Asia. Antum yang saya bawa tu ing year 2000, yang mendeklarasi Presiden era pun all out war against the Malay. So, na uno ang negosasyon. Dahil yun, in January 2001, take over si Gloria. Pag take over ni Gloria, Arroyo, hindi yun si Gloria na marisyon ang negosasyon. So, hindi rin mga good interesado ni Maile kaya pura ang di-fair betrayed. So we had to see the approach ni Gloria, si Prime Minister Mater of Malaysia, to help to facilitate the resumption of the talks. Kung iingon ni mga, sa may mga datong pamilya wala may ibon. Sa lamang, for example, dahil si Bobby, alun to mo si Bobby. Pag umangkod ni Senator Alonto, and then ang anak pag yun ni Senator Alonto, si June Alonto, was also a member at one time, but first time. And then, on the part of government, if you remember President Emily Maronsa of MSU, who was former the president of MSU, was also a member of the government of the First, on the matter of perspective, ang atin pong annual budget ay almost 2 trillion. So 70 billion compared to 2 trillion in a, as Prof. Swara Good said, in a conflict-affected area. And that is assuming na 70 billion nga. We also don't know how that number came about. So ang short time na pupunta sa Bangsa Moro government, a government that is subject to auditing rules, na twice pa nga, isa sa Bangsa Moro auditing body, isa sa COA, very strict, parang I think this, this comes from a, an issue of mistrust again, eh. very strict about the government uh, auditing uh, system ng COA, at the same time, meron pang isa, may Bangsa Moro auditing body. 
So ang issue ay pangkuha ng Bangsamore government, a government entity, or at least a Bangsamore Transitional Authority, the interim government, composed not only of the MILF, but other representatives of sectors in the Bangsamoro appointed by the President, is number one, the annual block grant, 4% of the remaining 60% of the national internal revenue collections. As Professor Abud said, that, uh, that compares to the current ARM budget, Current arm budget, despite the fact that the Bank Samoro may possibly have a bigger uh, uh, go uh, geographical coverage, more legal powers. That's why we have a provision there for review of the, the formula. My question is, uh, if any finality, will have a referendum to get Natal only yung BBL, what's the last option of the peace panel? And as provided, even in the agreement, is the uh, BPL will be subject to a referendum. So areas that will vote in favor will be the one. If an area, for example, like for, uh, we, we take for example, Lano de So, Lano de So will vote against, then you will be out. You will be out from the, uh, the proposed uh, uh, Bangsamuro government. Only those who are both in people will be included. Siguro we need to clarify what we need in the Sibang Samoro to, to put things in uh, its proper perspective. So we use the term Bang Samoro in three different uh, ways. Isa po yung identity. So that's what we're talking about when we say Bang Samoro, there are Bang Samoro in Metro Manila, in Baguio, in elsewhere, in the, in the Philippines, not just in ARM. So that's the first use, that's your identity, you ascribe to it, whether you ascribe or not ascribe to it. And number two is the is the territory. So yun po, yun yung requirement, may plebiscite. So you can be a Bangsamoro outside of the Bangsamoro political entity. And then the government, you can be a Bangsamoro that is not within the jurisdiction of a Bangsamoro government. One thing I don't know is uh, amount of, uh, nung nagkaroon ng RA674, uh, Congress allotted um, 2 billion, 10 billion no? spread across 5 years para dun sa special assistance fund pa, sa ARM. Um, ang VAT, ngayon mo, the same, 5 billion, dinag, uh, 10 billion spread across 5 years, dinagdagan na ng 7 billion uh, sa first year. Pero kung titinan niyo po, that's 1989, that's 25, 26 years ago? 89, back to 20, when, 26 na. Uh, 25 years later, panahon ngayon ni Korea, the mother, ngayon sa panahon ng, ko, ng Aquino the Sun, ang final draft, uh, yun yung kanyang proposal, as uh, based on the computer price, com consumer price index, ang value ko ng 2 billion in 1989, dapat 8.7 billion in 2014. No, para klaro lang. Uh, and at present, uh, construction of a concrete road is 13 million a kilometer, so 2 billion pesos actually in 2014 can build only 153.85 kilometers. Uh, and pinakalas lang na insert kasi nakalimutan ko bangitin kanina, the Gayaan de Oro played a historic role in the resumption of the peace talks, uh, sorry, in the starting of the peace talks, because dito unang nakita si Jafar and uh, Ruben Torres. Torres in August 2, 1996. And the general cessation of hostilities was actually signed here in the Gayaan de Oro on July 18, 1977. Uh, I am Rick Tamala, a uh, retired government media man. Could the panel react on the allegation that the arms from the Hulin policeman, which was returned by the MILF, was moved, ipalit ng Philippine government through the office of the presidential advisor and principal Well, I, I, I think uh, walang bayaran dyan. Walang bayaran dyan. Two questions. Why do you call it ministerial and not just parliamentary, which is a generic term? No? And second, are you aware that the Barangay government is a parliamentary form of government. There is no separation of powers in the Barangay. But I wonder, in all of Monoland, whether there is one Barangay that is operating as a ministerial form or parliamentary form. 
And finally, if you expect government to speak with one voice, so this is a question that is being asked of me everywhere. Why can't we, ordinary citizens, expect our brother Muslims, our Bangsa Moro brothers and sisters, to speak with one voice? Ministerial, as far as the, co uh, the comprehensive agreement and the DDL is concerned, is interchangeable with the parliament. That's why we call it the Bangsa Moro parliament and the DDL. Barangays are parliamentary in nature, I agree, not just them, but uh, other forms of LGUs, they have a, uh, there's no clear separation of executive as Mr. Sanzi mentioned in his uh, statement during the Senate Committee hearing under Senator Miriam Defensor Santiago, even our national government has uh, features of a uh, parliamentary form of government like the question hour and the others. So uh, we really think that uh, it's, so having said that, we really think that uh, it's no, uh, it's not unconstitutional to introduce a parliamentary form of government for a subnational governmental unit, even if, uh, even for LGUs. In fact, it's up to Congress to do that in a, in a different uh, local government code later on. Uh, the barangays in arm in the prospective Bangsamoro have enacted their own local government code, mirroring the 1991 local government code used in, in the entire uh, country. So the, what we see as a barangay in Manila, in Kagendi Oro, is reflective of what we see as barangays in arm. Uh, regarding the third question, if you recall, earlier we have only one in Manila. But the creation of these different groups is actually the product of the non-implementation of agreements. Now, on the part of the Imalev, the Imalev is negotiating the government, and the Imalev is also selling this to the other groups. The Imalev is talking with the Imalev, and we have already organized the Bangsamo, organized the Bangsamoro Coordination Forum between the Imalev and the Imalev. You have mentioned uh, twice already in, in Makati, where the uh, representative of the OIC came to Makati uh, to facilitate that. And uh, with the PIAP, they also made earlier statement that they are on a wait and see if, if the agreement will be implemented and it will solve the problem, then there's no problem, uh, there will be no problem to them. Now, the most important uh, here is how can we convince people to trust the peace process? This is the most important. Because we, uh, we don't want violence. The only guarantee that violence will not occur or recur is only if we can convince people that there is hope in the peace process. There is hope in the negotiation. There is hope in the dialogue. If people cannot see the show, then they will lose hope. They will lose faith in dialogues, in negotiations, in the peace process. And that's the worst thing that will happen. And we don't want that to happen. <laughs> It's unfair to lodge this heavy burden of sustainable and lasting peace on one legislation. Marami na po tayong ginawang batas, wala naman po maging assurance. Tulad ng ginagawa natin expectation from the BBL na pag may BBL na po may Bangsamoro government na wala ng corruption sa ARM or sa mga officials ng Bangsamoro. Uh, tulad po nang uh, nakalagay sa CAB, BBL is one of the steps towards uh, establishing lasting sustainable peace in, in conflict-affected areas, but it's certainly not the only one. We still have to go through the entire process. The, I think, I would, I, in my opinion, the more challenging process of normalization. And that entails yung maraming, maraming aspeto. Hindi lang po yung establishment of political entity that addresses the self-determination aspect of the Bangsamoro cause, but also the security situation, the social economic development, and most importantly, the national healing through transitional justice and reconciliation. Yun po mga yun, yun yung tingin namin overall recipe for 
that uh, for the ultimate goal of lasting peace. Hindi lang po ito BDN. Kaya your question. I do have a My question is, uh, it's really a kind of clarification I would like to be able to ask. Uh, the arm, which is in the Constitution, has first to be dissolved. All right? Then it has to be dissolved. Therefore, what it means is that uh, there has to be a constitutional what? Mm -hmm. amendment, which means all of us will have to vote on it, right? So given that, how sure are we that uh, this will really push to the BBL? No? Secondly, I would like to ask a question that I've been receiving on my text from people from Sultan to the Lab. And they're saying that as of this time, uh, Muslims are already going around pointing at their houses and they're Christians and saying this is going to be ours, this is mine, this is mine. So it, they are all already upset. Somebody has sold a carabao to buy arms, you know? So I said this is bad. I mean, are we going back to spare one to the Ilaga and the Black Hills, which I used to cover? Uh, I will allow my... Uh the American panels to answer the second question. Uh, to abolish the arm doesn't necessitate constitutional change. Um, we are creating a Bangsamoro government that is the autonomous region promised in the constitution. To abolish it doesn't require constitutional change and therefore it doesn't need a national referendum. We only need to comply with the requirement of the constitution that the plebiscite shall be conducted in the areas that will be directly affected by this law, meaning whether they want to join or not to join, the plebiscite shall be conducted to determine the, the geographic scope of the area. So no constitutional change. You know, yeah, na, there are mga tao na, mga hatlog sa sikatao. I think that's where I think there's a need, particularly in the rural, uh, the, uh, the media here can help in disseminating correct information. I agree with you that uh, there is a lot of misinformation Nothing in the BBL, nothing in the comprehensive agreement in Bangsamoro uh, uh, provides on confiscatory uh, uh, to confiscate properties of individuals. Uh, to what uh, Professor uh, said, no? uh, if, if, if I got to write that, there are people moving around, moving about, and pointing to houses, saying, this is mine, this is mine. Uh, I would suggest very strongly that you report this to the police because these people are either nuts or mischief makers. So I would suggest very strongly that if there are such people moving about, moving around, roaming around and saying this is mine, this is mine, they should be reported to the police so that they can be apprehended. So Dahan kayo atong may sikutan. Wapo kayo ang atong interaction. Medyo init lang kay kada tagamin na lang magbunda. Mauna na ano, anong awa ko kayo ito ko impresyon niya sa panel ka na ni Muslim. Gili ni Moro Moro. Tinuod kini. It's coincidental lang ni. Na nagkuban ni. Kay 40 anos wag magkita ni ba. So this is what we could see in DPD. Napakaganda ng ating interaction, napaka-informative. It has indeed increased our knowledge and understanding about BBL. And to give us the closing statement, we have the chair of Mendel News, Mr. Marcos C. Morden. We have different views and attitudes toward the peace process in general and the BBL in particular. Let's accept the fact that not all of us are in favor of the BBL. Some are opposing it simply because they have deep-seated biases against the Moro as a people. Some are opposing it because they believe it violates certain provisions in the Constitution. And others have reservations if the law will indeed bring about lasting peace in Mindanao. 
I don't mind how you view the BBL. That is your right. I do have some questions about the specific provisions of the proposed law. But I am convinced that we should give it a chance. For we might not have another chance for a peaceful resolution to this decades-old conflict that has claimed 120,000 lives, half of them civilians. In closing, allow me to share a word of wisdom from Sancho, the ancient sage of war. No country has benefited from prolonged warfare. Thank you very much.